ASIC to ban CFDs. Let's have a look. Good morning, everyone. Florian Heiser here, and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I've got my stein of coffee on a nice Saturday, and I thought we'd have a look at this article from The Guardian about the Australian Securities and Investment Commission looking at restricting the use of OTCs over the counter and contracts for different CFDs. Now, these are investment tools that people can use often leveraged to you know peg against the or invest against the price of different items shares commodities you know foreign exchange rates all of these type of things and a lot of people lose money on them i think about 70 percent of people lose money on at least the some of the traders that i was looking at it's not easy and one of the issues is that it is leveraged so often an example, say you put $1,000 in, they can 6x it and you can borrow five grand from them. So when you're investing, you've got the power of additional money. Now, the broker doesn't mind because they'll charge you interest if you hold it over the day. But also if you make a loss, you owe them more. So you could get into a circumstance where you could essentially lose more than you've invested into it. But also you could make a lot more than you've invested into it. So... And the problem is a lot of retail investors are losing money. So let's have a look at this article about why ASIC wants to restrict it. And let me know what your opinions are on this in the comments. Should people be allowed to, to you know, take the risk their money how they want? Or should ASIC step in and protect people? Because, uh, you know, there's lots of other scams and things happening all around that are even worse than this. And ASIC is not really stepping in to protect it. I'll talk about that in another video. So ASIC to ban or restrict investment products which lose customers 2 billion a year. So the corporate regulator says it will ban or restrict the sale of two exotic investment products that cost customers almost 2 billion a year. Using new pr product interventions powers gained in April, the Australian Securities and Investment Commission wants to ban the sale of binary options to ordinary Australians for 18 months, the maximum period allowed under the law. It also plans to dramatically reduce the amount of leverage allowed on contracts for difference or spread betting from as much as 500 to 1 to as little as 2 to 1. Firms will also be banned from allowing clients to get into a position where they owe the company money. There you are. Binary option is a bet on whether a share price or other financial indicator will go up or down while a contract for difference involves picking both the direction and the size of the movement. There are 65 firms offering one or both of these products listed in Australia, including the London-based, sorry, London-listed IG Markets and CMC Markets, US giant FXCM and homegrown outfits Pepperstone. Well, I might actually look at... I wonder if you could buy some CFDs for IG markets on using IG markets. That'd be interesting. Despite their exotic nature, the products are heavily promoted through a network of introducers and through internet advertising, including on dating sites. They are extremely popular with retail investors. One interesting thing, because I've I've signed up with a new broker. I'm looking at a few different ones, and they're ringing me up, ringing me up to get me to make my first trade. They won't just, oh, if you can make a $1 trade, you can see how it just flows through the system, they say. What they want to do is they want to get you to commit to make, you know, emotionally put the money in and then spend it and then probably lose it. So I thought, I thought that was quite interesting just seeing their marketing strategies. ASIC data released on Thursday shows that about a third of investors in binary options or CFDs have an income of less than 37,000 a year. Investors lose about 490 million a year on binary options and about 1.5 billion a year on CFDs, according to ASIC data. The Australian market has also more than doubled in size from about 450,000 clients to about 1 million over the past two years, as other countries, including the UK, Israel, and much of the EU have banned or restricted the products. Well, there you go. What happens when these products get banned or restricted? People just go to other countries to access it. Only 17% of the clients of these products are in Australia, ASIC Commissioner Cathy Armour told Guardian Australia. We are concerned about the fact that 62% of the clients are located in Asia, the biggest proportion of that in China. 
The Chinese regulators are very clear in our conversations with them that people in China are prohibited from trading in what we call contracts for difference. So I didn't know the Chinese couldn't trade in that. That's very interesting. The high leverage in CFD products means that a bad move in the market can result in an investor not only losing all the money they've deposited with the provider, but also end up owing it substantial amounts of money. We've seen a number of complaints from people who didn't realize the funding costs and found themselves facing significant debts, Armour said. It is the second time ASIC said it wants to use its new banning powers since they were introduced in April. In July, it said it wanted to ban payday lending products that can result in charges of up to 990% of the amount loaned. Under the new laws, ASIC is required to consult with industry before banning or restricting products. Armour said CFDs could be a good investment for some people and downplayed the idea companies offering them might be driven out of business. We think they can have a good and effective business if they operate under the adjustments we've pr we're proposing here, he said, she said. Happy customers help contribute to a really sustainable business. The consultation closes on October 1. So this is a, something surprising that we actually have time to make a submission. If you are interested in this, we've actually got time to make a submission. But let's have a look at this document from ASIC. And this is to do with consumer harm from OTC, which is over-the-counter binary options and contracts for different CFDs. So here we go. And this is from August 2019, which is now. So the industry at a glance. The Australian retail OTC derivative sector is growing at a rapid pace. Most clients who trade binary options or CFDs lose money. To address this harm, we propose to use our product intervention power to prohibit binary options and restrict, restrict CFDs offering, offered to retail clients. Similar measures are in place in many overseas markets. Binary options are all or nothing bet on the outcome of an event. A CFD is a contract on the difference between the opening and closing price of an asset. In 2017 and 2019, we collected information from 57 and 61 active Australian financial services licenses, respect licensees respectively. The review revealed key insights into the sector. For example, the number of retail clients trading binary options or CFDs more than doubled in the past two years. So here we go. 2017 versus 2019, the clients went from 450 to 1 million. Retail clients are now at 99%. Why am I drawing blue over blue? I don't know. The clients fund uh, funds held are from 2 billion to 2.9, and the annual transactions just from 236 million to 675 million. And look at their turnover: 11 trillion to 22 trillion. Maybe this is a a good long-term business to invest in the, the organizations that manage these. So a snapshot, uh, 64 AFS, 65 AS, uh, AFS licensees made up of 64 CFT issuers and five binary option issuers, $8 billion trading revenue. Australia, that's, that's decent. 80% of the clients are aged 22 to 50. Fantastic, I'm in the age bracket. 32% of clients earn less than 37,000 per annum, or that's what they're saying on the, uh, the survey, I bet. New clients given uh, inducements in 2017 and 2018, total neg negative balances of CFDs trading accounts, negative 33 million. CFD margin callouts in 2018, 9 million. So the marketing expenses, so 131 million. So that's why I'm getting all these phone calls. <laughs> So I'm getting all these phone calls. Um, 281 million paid by issuers for client reference referrals and 60,000 plus referrers had arrangements with issuers to refer new clients. So is that gift really free? Issuers commonly offer inducements to attract new clients and entice existing clients to trade more, e.g. bonus credits or free gifts. In 2017 and 2018, over 225,000 new clients were given inducements for opening an account to trade binary options or CFDs. The offer of inducements can attract 
financially vulnerable consumers who underestimate the high risk of these products. Well, yeah, these are very high risk products. 83% of Australian issuers, clients are offshore. So you can see where all the clients are. And complaints. Complaints received by ASIC and AFCA about binary options and CFDs have accelerated since 2017. In 2019, they accounted for over one third of market re markets related complaints disproportionately, disproportionately large for the financial market sector. Well, I'm not surprised. Most clients who trade bin binary options who lose money were well, 80%. So binary options are worse than CFDs. Beaches of binary options are causing significant detriment, negative expected returns, high likelihood of cumulative losses, unsustainability as an investment or risk management product with product characteristics similar to gambling. Yes, this is the thing I, I, I this morning, this morning, because of the big, the big decline in the uh, American Stock Exchange, uh, I, I think my app listed everything at zero. So it looked like I lost a huge amount of money. So I go, Oh, Rachel, look, look, look how much we've lost. And that was a that was a really bad mistake to show my risk averse uh, wife. So oh, look, we, we've lost all this money. <laughs> yeah, she 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 got angry at me. <laughs> I shouldn't do that. That's, that's really unfair. Example one binary options. Tom makes 150 binary option bets, each with a potential payout of 180. If he wins a bet, he gets 180. Otherwise, he gets nothing. Tom has a 92% chance of losing money on his 150 binary options bets and Tom most likely return on his investment is a loss of one and a half thousand. Well, there you go. This example assumes equal odds of winning or losing, which is more generous than the reality of betting on binary options. Okay. Tom thinks the ASX 200 will rise. He invests $10,000 in a CFD with leverage of 200 to one, which gives him a $2 million bet on the ASX 200 index. Transaction costs are amplified by leverage. Tom pays a $10 commission to open the position and spreads of 0.05%, which equals equates to $1,000 for the position size. CFD issuer charges a 5% per annum overnight funding cost, which equates to $274. There was no dividend adjustment in Tom's CFD position. Sensitivity to market vol uh, volatility. As a result of the global events, the ASX 200 unexpectedly drops by 1%. Tom incurs a $20,000 loss on his $2 million position size. Tom has lost more than twice his initial deposit and now owes $11,284 to the issuer. Well, couldn't you put a guaranteed stop loss in there to mitigate that risk? But I can see, I've heard of you know this not happening. So the proposed action. We have previously taken strong action to address our concerns about binary options and CFDs using a range of regulatory tools. However, retail clients continue to suffer significant detriment from these products. Our product intervention powers allow us to intervene when we are satisfied that a financial product has resulted in or will result in is likely to, or will result, oh, sorry. Our product intervention power allows us to intervene when we are satisfied that a financial product has resulted in, will result in, or is likely to result in significant detriment to retail clients. So prohibit the issue and distribution of over-the-counter binary options to retail clients. Unlike some other derivatives, binary options make no meaningful investment or ec economic utility. Well, yeah, it's just a bet. They did not offer participation in the growth in value of the underlying asset. Their all or nothing payoff structure makes them unsuitable for risk management arrangements, e.g. hedging. We believe a complete ban of OTC binary options is necessary to address the significant detriment to retail clients. Okay, impose conditions on the issue and distribution of OTC CFDs over the counter cash for difference to retail clients. We believe our proposed uh, conditions for CFDs are the most appropriate regulatory action to reduce the significant detriment suffered by retail clients. Our conditions, one, impose leverage uh, ratio limits. Two, implement a standardized approach to automatic closeouts of retail client positions. Three, protect against negative balances. Four, prohibit certain inducements. Five, require 
enhanced transparency of CFD pricing, execution, cost, and risks. So similar measures are in place overseas. That's why our sector is growing. Our proposals are broadly consistent with uh, product intervention measures taken in overseas markets and are the guidelines in the IOSIC toolkit, binary options. Regulators in Europe and North America have banned or limited the issue and distribution of OTC binary options to retail clients. Submarkets have provided restricted exceptions, e.g. for long, longer contract durations. CFDs in some markets, there are leverage limits and additional consumer protection measures consistent with the IOSCO toolkit. Consistency with other markets will help prevent regulatory arbitrage. So here we go, timeline of product intervention in overseas jurisdictions, 2015 before China, Hong Kong, Japan, Singapore, South Korea, United States, 2016 Belgium, 2017 Canada and Israel, 2018 the ESMA, and 2019 Austria, Belgium, Croatia, well, everywhere <laughs> except Australia. So I wonder, yeah. So guys, what do you think about all of this? Are you in favor of the government implementing or putting these procedures in place because i mean you can make a big loss yeah there's, there's the risk of that i mean we saw today this morning the, the dramatic change in the stock market and that really could blow out your investment so if you want to make a submission to this this is the consultation paper and i'll link to these on their website but you can see here here we go where is it the consultation project before making a uh, product intervention order, we must uh, consult persons who are reasonably likely to be affected by the order. See S1023F of the Corporations Act. You are invited to comment on the proposed product intervention orders in this paper. We are keen to fully understand and assess the financial and other impacts of our proposed product intervention orders. Therefore, we ask you to comment on our identification of the products and their availability for acquisition by issue to retail clients, the significant consumer detriment we've identified, the product interven intervention orders we propose to make, the likely compliance costs, the likely effect on competition, other impact costs and benefits, and the proposed delay commencement of each order. Where possible, we are seeking both quantitative and qualitative information. Any information about compliance costs, effects on competition, and other impact costs and benefits will be taken into account if we prepare a regular regulation impact statement, see section G. So it's funny, it sounds like they're not calling for any uh, submission from retail investors, because we're just dumb plebs. We're just dumb plebs. Maybe it's time to open up that, uh, that account with that Bahamas trading organization that will probably go under. Uh, making a submission. You may choose to remain anonymous or use an alias when making a submission. However, if you do remain anonymous, we'll not be able to contact you to discuss your submission should we need to. Please note that we will not treat your submission as confidential unless you have specifically request that we treat the whole part, such as any personal financial information as confidential. So this is a privacy policy and the comments can be sent to here. And the email, I'll read that out for the podcast, market.supervision.otc at asic.gov.au. So guys, on um, what will happen next, right now, stage one, the ASIC consultation paper was release, released on the 22nd of August. Stage two on the 1st of October, comments due on the consultation paper. And from October 2019, stage three, con consider all comments on the consultation paper. Consult the Office of Best Practice regulation about our analysis of the regulatory impact of our proposals. Decide whether to make product intervention orders in respect to binary options and or CFDs. Publish on our website notice of any decision to make a product intervention order and the terms of any product intervention order made, including the commencement date. So there you go, guys. Make your submissions. Let me know what you think. Have you invested in CFDs or the over-the-counter binary options? Have you made a fortune on it or have you been burned? Let me know. Take care, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you all later. Bye for now.